Liberty Nation with Tim Donner. If President Trump was going to win the 2020 election, he would have needed to do it on the strength of an economy which was chugging along in fine shape until the coronavirus hit, and which has shown surprising strength in bouncing back from COVID-19 staggering economic consequences, though this third wave of the virus promises to pack a wallop. But... According to what we've been told, five million more people have voted against Trump than for him, and his path to a second term is a long shot. So it looks like the voters might well receive what they voted for, a Joe Biden economy. And just what would that likely look like? Joining us to answer that question is the man on all things economic, fiscal, and incomprehensibly geekish. LibertyNation.com economics correspondent Andrew Moran. Welcome back, Andrew. Thank you. As always, that's a great entrance for me. I, I appreciate that. I take a while trying to put that together, but Andrew, what would be the most immediate impact on the economy of a Joe Biden presidency? Well, I, I think that depends on uh, who he's surrounding himself with. So far, he's surrounding himself a lot of uh, Ob Obama officials, and he's having a lot of you know people who who support lockdowns. I remember just last week, one of his key COVID nineteen advisors, uh, he appeared on CNBC and he was talking about how you know the nation have to shut down for six to eight weeks to contain it. Uh, now he did turn Jefferson and he said that well, that wasn't a policy suggestion. But if he has these people with these ideas surrounding himself with, then you know if there's a dramatic spike come inauguration day, what would prevent Joe Biden from saying, okay, let's shut down the country and let's you know hurt these businesses even more? Um, but I think if he's able to get uh, a lot of the fiscal stimulus passed that, that he wants and he wants to spend more, then I think the economy you know, will, will be fine in the short term. Because if you look at all the data and, and the way the markets are performing, uh, they really need that stimulus, that both monetary and fiscal. Without it, the trading mm -hmm. are just going to come off and they're going to fall off the uh, fiscal cliff. Now, Trump was saying the stock market would collapse if Joe Biden was elected, but the markets held up well. What do you surmise in the reaction of markets to Biden's apparent victory? Well, I don't think it's so much that the, the markets were cheering uh, Joe Biden. I think they were cheering based on the fact that there was there's more certainty that Joe Biden is going to win. There isn't going to be this political chaos. We're not going to be fighting in the streets. Well, you know, at least on a, on a, on a, on a widespread scale, uh, because if there's one thing that markets don't like, it's uncertainty. You know, if you're heading into November or December and there still isn't a clear winner, then, you know, you're, you're going to have a major sell off going on. And so, you know, they, they know what they're getting with Joe Biden. They just wanted to know, OK, fine, this is who we're getting. And that's it. I mean, it wouldn't have mattered if Biden or Trump won. The markets were still going to react. Uh, but it is interesting, however, because I, I've seen a lot where, uh, at, least on, at least on Twitter, when it comes to Biden supporters, and they would talk about, well, Trump warned that you know 401k would crash, uh, as, as you just said. So the stock market, if you look at the stock market, uh, the stock market didn't really soar, hasn't really soared on a Biden presidency. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't really that soar that much on announcements that uh, Pfizer and Moderna were uh, uh, producing a coronavirus vaccine. Uh, so the markets, you you would expect that the markets would soar two thousand points, you know, over the, every single day with those vaccine announcements, but that doesn't happen, and that and that to me suggests how weak the the economy is right now because of the coronavirus, coronavirus uh, pandemic, and then all these business shutting down, retailers are closing, you know, shoppers are staying home, nothing's really going on. So you need even more stimulus from the Fed, from Congress, in order to keep the 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 thing going on. Uh, there's, I would say, however, to look at gold and silver markets, they can provide a good example or a good measurement of what could happen. Uh, there has been some sell-off going on in gold and silver, but it still remained at multi-year highs because everyone's expecting higher inflation coming on. Uh, of course, it does, it does depend on, on the makeup of the U.S. Senate, but for the most part, Biden will probably use executive action and you'll have these trillions of dollars being spent and then trillions more being printed. And that's going to lead to massive uh, rampant price inflation. I wrote a few months ago talking about the COVID-19 induced inflation going on. And you are starting, you're starting, you're starting to see a huge spike in it, at least when it comes to the key ones of, uh, of, of food and shelter. Those are skyrocketing right now. The things that people want, things are going up. Things that people don't want, it's going down. The worst possible combination. Now, Andrew, there will obviously be large tax increases proposed by Democrats in the White House and the House of Representatives. 
The Senate may block, if it's controlled by Republicans, which is yet to be finally decided, what impact would reversing the Trump tax reform, the Trump tax cuts, be likely to have on a staggering or recovering or soon to be staggering again economy? Well, one of the main reasons that the Trumponomics was such a success and why the you know financial markets popped and why the economy grew at a, at a, at a remarkable pace was because of the tax cuts. At first, I was skeptical. I thought it was just you know reshuffling of the deck chairs and it wouldn't wouldn't really to too much growth, but. Good thing I, I was I was incorrect. Uh, and the, the tax cuts, if they, they benefit more than just corporations, 82% of Americans, they, they benefit from the tax cuts. So if you reverse them or raise taxes at a time when nobody has any money, businesses are shut down, corporations are, are, you know, they're not, they're not expecting to grow their operations anytime soon, you're going to have stagnate, a stagnating economy with rampant price inflation and an economic downturn. Um, when it comes to small businesses, I mean, if Biden leaves them be, then perhaps they can recover. But, you know, there's always a trickle down effect when it comes to raising taxes on corporations, because a lot of their, a lot of their customers are small businesses. So if you're going to raise taxes dramatically, or at least get rid of those Trump tax cuts, then you're, you're not going to have much growth. So a Biden presidency will not lead to much, uh, you know, won't lead to uh, happy days are here again. Well, there's taxes and then there's regulations. And in the grand scheme of things, Andrew, how important has Trump's deregulation been to the economy as opposed to tax cuts and tax reform? Well, I think the deregulation was great for business, but I think it was even better for the consumer. Uh, consumers have saved thousands of dollars thanks to thanks to this de- to the deregulation. I remember uh, I wrote a few months ago, uh, I think it was earlier this year on Liberty Nation, talking about how much consumers have saved. Uh, if you look at the cost of an automobile, for instance, the average family has saved around three thousand dollars because you know of the deregulation when it comes to you know green energy or or fuel efficiency or whatever the, whatever whatever uh, I think it was for every one new regulation, three were removed. But he went as far as going eight. So right. that led to a greater uh, to greater benefits for uh, consumers. Um, and I actually, I, I, I was researching uh, a couple of weeks ago on this, and even the federal government saved money on deregulations because uh, I think the average department saved around eighteen billion dollars in regulatory cost savings because they had to they had less of uh, you know going of of slapping these fines on, investigating problems, having more manpower. So this so the deregulations benefit everybody except you know Trump's opponents because then, you know, uh, this would this wouldn't lead to economic growth. And then they could ha- be happy saying, oh, you know, uh, economy is suffering and, you know, uh, Trump's evil and Trump's Hitler and all that stuff. Well stated. Um, finally, Andrew, how big a challenge does COVID-19 now in a third wave continue to present to the economy? Well, I, I think... Um, Penel Bird, Penel Bird, who seems to be the uh, COVID correspondent at Liberty Nation, he's written extensively, extensively on this, talking about how destructive it's been, uh, how it's been more destructive, the response to it than has actually the, the, the virus has been to everybody, you know, corporations, small businesses, households, everyone, everyone has suffered from it. Uh, the coronavirus, coronavirus vaccine, you know, they, they Pfizer said it's 95% effective, uh, Moderna says it's 94% effective, but you know, will it be that good? I mean, will people want to take it considering how new it is? If, if you know, there has been that extensive research, is, are there going to be side effects? So a vaccine isn't the, isn't the panacea that we all expect it to be. Um, it's not going to erase the whole uh, pandemic. You know, you already see the great reset going on and people like Dr. Fauci talking about you have to still have to wear masks, you know, you still have to social distance even with these vaccines. So as long as these public health guidelines are implemented for the next you know couple of years, there, there's not going to be a tidal wave of, of economic growth happening, which is why the Fed keeps talking about both you're going to need fiscal stimulus and the Fed is going to be there to support both the economic downturn and the economic recovery. So you're going to have all this money, money spending and money printing for the next several years going on, which takes away from the private economy, which then leads to higher, which, which leads to higher price inflation. Uh, and uh, a bit of a teaser, I'm going to be writing an article in the coming days for Liberty Nation talking about how evil these policymakers are, because not only do they want higher price inflation, they're punishing people who are making less money because of the of these coronavirus measures that they support. So uh, that's a spoiler for all of our Liberty Nation uh, listeners right now. Nobody does it better when it comes to economics than Andrew Moran of LibertyNation.com. 
Andrew, thanks for joining us again. Thank you for having me.